Hey there, Rory here, web designer and co-founder at Propeller Digital. And today I'm going to be giving you a quick guide through a very handy Chrome extension for Webflow called FinSuite extension for Webflow. Entirely free to use and it's made by an excellent Webflow agency by the name of FinSuite who as well as pumping out beautiful websites also make a range of very, very useful tools for Webflow. I'm a big fan of all of the stuff that these guys make. Most of it's free to use. Some of it I've implemented on live client websites. It's been a joy to use. Um, in this particular video, just going to take a look at the extension. So I've installed it in Webflow, or I've installed it in Chrome. And all you're gonna see at first is this little icon down here. That's their logo. And when you click into that, it gives you five options here. The one we're interested in today with most of the practical features is called Candy. So I'm gonna dive right into it and quickly give you an overview of each of them. 301 bulk redirects allows you to upload a CSV file with a list of redirects that you want to upload. You can add these manually inside Webflow, which is usually enough, but if you're working on a particularly large site with a lot of pages and you have to redirect quite a lot of links, this is a time-saving feature. Not one that I've needed use of yet, but if it ever does come up in the future, I know that I can use this to bulk upload those redirects. Breakpoints allows you to do two things. The first is to highlight breakpoints, which I've turned on. And you'll see, you can see which breakpoint you're clicked into, obviously. But it's sometimes not as obvious when you're working on the larger ones. And just to make it blazingly clear which one you're clicked into, it just changes the highlighting from black to red. The other thing it does, again, not something I've had to use yet, but it lets you delete a breakpoint. So if I was to delete this bigger one, it would remove any styling specifically for this breakpoint and would return to just using this breakpoint for anything larger than the size it's set up for. So again, not something I've used, but if you did need to delete a breakpoint, if you added one and realized you didn't need it, you can do that inside of candies and breakpoints. Color swatches reorder just lets you change the order of your color swatch as it appears down here. This is my own personal site. It only has two colors, but on larger projects, I have used this just to reorder the colors, keep the primary colors together, the transparent colors together. When you add these in, they're just listed in the order that they're added in. So this is a organizational feature, but it is important to keep your project as organized as possible. It makes it quicker and easier for you to use. So that's a handy feature for changing the order of those color swatches. Cookie consent is a pop-up that you can use for cookie consent. It does what it says in the tin. You do need to do the setup for this system, but when you do have that done, this is just a quick and easy way to view their pre-built templates, copy them and paste them into your Webflow project. It saves a bit of time if you are setting up their cookie consent and there's a link to the documentation on how to do that. CSS styles reorderer. Now they give good instructions for all of these tools. This is not for example, sorting styles alphabetically or for visually ordering them. This is something to do with CSS specificity. And this essentially means that if two or more CSS rules point to the same element, this decides which one is used first. It's a way of giving priority or ranking to your CSS styles. Not something I've had to use, but if you do ever need to do that, you can do that in here. You can change the importance or the priority of your CSS styles. Custom code is just a way of accessing and changing custom code without having to click out into your project into custom code and doing it in here. So again, a lot of these are small quality of life things, but if you're working in Webflow every day like me, it's a handy way of saving time and being able to quickly access your code Handy if you're writing a lot of JavaScript or custom CSS. Interactions order is the same as the color swatches reorder. It just allows you to reorder your interactions over here, your custom animations. So again, the larger a project grows, the more of these you can end up having. Sometimes they'll be scattered. Maybe you want them alphabetically. Maybe you want certain interactions grouped together because you use them together. 
Same with the color swatch. They're just listed in the order that you add them in. So again, handy organizational tool for tidying up your project. Merge combo classes lets you merge two combo classes into one while keeping the other ones. Maybe you're using two custom classes a lot and you'd like to combine them and just get the benefit of using the two of them with one. You could make that from scratch over in the styles here, or you can again save a little bit of time by selecting two classes to merge and creating a new class from them. Page history, a handy one. Again, if you're on a website with a lot of pages and you're switching back and forth between the two pages, Turning this on enables a little drop down here that lets you quickly scroll through them, but it also gives you a keyboard shortcut. Keyboard shortcuts obviously being great for saving time. The longer we can keep both hands on the keyboard without having to switch over to the mouse, the better. So handy way of switching back and forwards between pages that you're on a lot. Back into candies, remove classes. So you can pick any page and you can just remove all the classes applied to the elements on that page. This doesn't delete the classes, it just removes them from all your elements. Uh, again, they're very good with their warnings, not reversible unless you restore a backup, and they point out the use case. If it's an unorganized project, maybe you've taken over a Webflow website for someone else, or maybe you want to redesign a page with new branding, you can strip the classes from it and apply them from scratch. Remove styles, removing styles by breakpoint. So if you wanted to remove all the styles from this breakpoint, you want to start again from scratch, but not delete the styles from all other breakpoints, this is a way of doing that. It'll just reset all the styles on those particular breakpoints. So, you know, if I have, um, I have a white, style here for the color white. If I want to remove what that does on this particular breakpoint, but not change it on the other breakpoints, that's where that tool comes in handy. Symbols reorder, same as color swatches and interactions reorder, lets you change the order of them. Not particularly useful when I only have three symbols, but again, I have used this on larger client websites, but there's a lot of symbols. And again, organizational thing, keep things nice and tidy, save time, drag them into alphabetical order or some other particular order that's handy to you. Unbind CMS. So if you've ever tried to copy the elements on one CMS page to another one, or if you're trying to copy a collection list like this one here from one to another, and you want to change it to use some other piece of content. So let's say as an example, I have a, a blog page here. I want to also set up an events page and I want to copy this. If I copy it over, you'll see over here, if I click into the collection wrapper and into the settings, I can't change the source. The reason for that being all of these elements are being dynamically populated from that particular source. What I have to do is go into each of these and unlink them, remove the dynamic content filling from the CMS list, copy it over and then relink them. Again, not a big problem on my own site where I have one, two, three, four things that are linked up, but on a larger site where you have a more complicated collection list, this is a handy way of copying it to another page and quickly unlinking it so that you can repurpose it for another function. Last but not least, we have vertical canvas resizing that you enable here, and it does exactly what it says on the tin. It lets you vertically resize the canvas. Webflow by default is limited to horizontal resizing, and sometimes you will be designing a site where you know there's an important hero section at the top, for example, you're trying to maximize the real estate that people see, and you want to see just how much of that content they are able to see. Very handy is that if you see over here on the right, it will show you what devices use that vertical height. There's a similar thing down at the bottom there. You can see this changing to show the various devices to see how they look. That also works with this vertical resizing. 
thin suite get their logo in there and you can also resize it up at the top here by entering a value so again just a handy way of visualizing your designs prototyping them seeing how they're going to look on different devices vertically as well as horizontally so that's it for most of what this chrome extension does for most people that's probably all they'll use it for at the start to very quickly touch on the other ones, Client First is a series of tools for using FinSuite's Client First system. And this is basically a way for organizing your styles inside of Webflow. It's a system for how you name them, the naming convention so that it's easier to use. It's particularly of use if you're on a team like me. And while I don't use this yet, it's on my to-do list. Um, there's quite a lot of documentation for it that I have yet to dig into. But the end goal is that all the Webflow designers in our team will use this system and that we can work on projects with each other. We can help each other with projects, assist each other and immediately understand the naming convention for the styles. Um, in my early days as a Webflow designer, I would work on a website and the styles naming would be all over the place despite my best efforts. Probably something you've experienced as well. So. I'll do another video on this once I figure it out. But if you do use client first, there are a couple of tools in there for managing that. Attributes is just a way to quickly view all of the attributes that Webflow have or that FinSuite have. To quickly explain what this is, if you go to finsuite.com forward slash attributes, there are a range of tools here that expand the functionality of Webflow. I'll do another video on these. These are extremely handy. They're very powerful. The vast majority of them are free. Only these top three ones require you to join their membership. As an example, we have a client site over here and we have a filter that works down here. So there are 20 of these. These are, this is a CMS collection with 20 items and this allows you to create your own filter for them. This can't be done natively in Webflow. You could create this with JavaScript if you know that very well, um, but this is very easy to set up. There's no code involved. Again, I'll get into these properly another time, but this is a quick way of accessing them. Products, again, is a similar thing. This is just a list. It's a resource of all of FinSuite projects. There is some incredibly handy stuff in here, such as calendar invite buttons, using CSS to change the scroll bar on your website. So again, this is just a resource directory for them. Highly recommend looking through all of those. And change log, just their change log. And some of their uh, unreleased features that they're working on. And that's the FinSuite extension for Chrome. Free to use, very powerful if you use all of FinSuite's other tools like attributes and clients first. Even without those, there are some very handy tools in here. Even just for the color swatch interactions and symbols of your order, this is a very useful tool, free to have. Check it out. Uh, let me know in the comments if you liked it, if you found it was good, if it's missing anything, and enjoy using the FinSuite Chrome extension.